In a place in the middle of the corn desert, a Midwestern shelter stands constructed of old wood. A stable out back, but not for any livestock, but rather a collection of eerie tales compiled and saved. As we open the double doors to the compound, we select the best in weird, paranormal, and unsettling news. And it all starts right now, live from the Acrylic Ranch. Well, it's about time that we got up live from the Acrylic Ranch. Wow, everybody just like dozed off and fell asleep while waiting for the Acrylic Ranch to come about. I love technical difficulties. I'm all about technical difficulties. Um, I'm going to shake that there, and we'll be good. Uh, I'm going to say that uh, Jennifer is joining us tonight. However, we've had a failure on Facebook Messenger. We've had a failure on Hangouts, and we've had a failure on Skype. What is happening? I, I don't know. Everything works beautifully during the day, and then when the Vance and Jen show comes about, seems like the systems just completely <laughs> fall apart. So uh, here we go. Uh, so, yes, our forest fairy of fear friend, Jennifer Ann, will be in the chats tonight. Um, <laughs> let's see. Let, let, <laughs> I'm going to see what she's got to say here. I knew you got nothing to say. Absolutely nothing to say. Uh, we want to start off on the uh, Acrylic Ranch tonight. Thanks for joining us, by the way. I greatly appreciate it. Um, we have to give out a couple of quick notes before we even jump into anything. Uh, a f good friend of, you know, the podcast world and this community, uh, he really needs a lot of mental pulling from all of us and however it is that you choose to do so, whether it's through prayer or through just good thoughts and shedding the light and kindliness, whatever it may be. But Tim Dennis over at Beyond the Darkness Radio, is in the hospital, and uh, he's facing some serious issues. Um, of course, he is the producer and co-host with Dave Schrader over at Beyond the Darkness Radio. And so on behalf of this entire community and the Acrylic Ranch and Jennifer and God knows probably all of you. Uh, let's just send out some good wishes over to Tim Dennis and hope for his quick recovery. Um, we've got a couple other <laughs> messages coming up. Um, well, regardless. <laughs> you wait, what do you mean you can't find the show tonight? We're, we're here. We're live. That's just how it is. It may take a little bit of time for you to be able to get on board here but Try. yeah <laughs> what did you want <laughs> if the system can fail it's definitely going to fail oh well that's okay anyway uh tomorrow it's the 21st of june and uh i'm kind of hoping i all of you are aware of what the 21st of June is, it's summer solstice. Yeah, the first day of summer. I was going to wear my summer dress today, but uh, it's at the cleaners. And I'm going to stick with that excuse. I have no other choice. Um, also, tomorrow, uh, the Acrylic Ranch's uh, greatest fan, uh, Kathy Stewart. It's her birthday tomorrow, so let's all wish Kathy a very happy birthday. Happy birthday, Kathy. She'll be 26 tomorrow. And no, I'm not dyslexic, <laughs> but I'm I'm not mean either by sharing ages. So, uh, yeah, happy birthday, Kathy. Uh, she'll be coming up to visit the ranch here, and so yes. Eh, okay. Uh. This is what makes a show such a professional thing. <laughs> yeah, it, should, it sure does. Anyway, hey, Eric, how are you, my friend? Thanks for stopping by. At least I know it's working for some people. Uh, even Jennifer's like, hey, are you live? See, once again, our systems worked great. 
perfectly messenger although we've never tried hangouts but skype and then all of a sudden we go to do our show and it's like all the systems just completely fail on us so maybe it's a tuesday thing maybe we need to move the acrylic ranch over to uh wednesday nights or something i'm not sure <laughs> anyway we left off with a happy birthday to kathy stewart uh, one of the greatest supporters over at the Acrylic Ranch here. So, happy birthday, Kathy. Uh, I want to give a shout-out and congratulations. Well, there's Jennifer. She she joined us. I knew she would. Our forest fairy of fear princess herself has joined in. I um, want to give a big shout-out to, to MJ Benias and his family. Uh, congratulations because he has a new addition so now he's father squared so congratulations go out to MJ Benias and this is why MJ hasn't been back on the show of course he's tied up with a little bit of fatherhood so uh, yeah Jennifer's uh, the fearsome fairy well I just called you the forest fairy of fear Whatever, I think it's all the same thing. You know, Flying Humanoid and Mothman, what's the difference? It's still the same thing. Speaking of Mothman, we've had another sighting of Mothman uh, this past Saturday, uh, very close to Navy Pier in Chicago. And, uh, I, again, I don't know, a jogger was uh, running along the path near Navy Pier, and uh, I believe it was around 7 p.m., so... It was still light out, uh, but saw a a large flying bat, according to him. Um, it seemed to be humanoid, had bat wings. He did describe it as bat wings, uh, rather large, and uh, kind of lost sight of it as it headed out towards the lake. So with all these witness testimonies as of late, this creature seems to be traveling off near the lake i i don't know uh, it's the same pattern but i have to give my kudos to you jennifer how because of the fact that she called it she was within one day of calling it in a prediction as to when the next sighting would be so i think jennifer you're definitely on to something here um, by looking at the maps and the dates of sightings seem to be starting to narrow something down, so maybe we can kind of pinpoint when the next sighting may take place within a day or two and then keep our eyes to the skies and keep those webcam patrols going, and we'll see if we see anything around the lakefront, north and south along the city of Chicago. I'm not really sure what what it's all about. Nobody really knows. There are no professionals, but I believe this is probably pushing 18 sightings, I think. I'm sure Lon Strickler will correct me if I'm wrong, but it's quite a number of sightings in the city of Chicago as of late. Uh, I really wanted to, to do the chit-chat with uh, Jennifer. Jennifer is sending a voice clip. However, we can't do the voice clip. <laughs> At least I don't think so. We can try it over here on this end, and we'll see what we get here. Just Don, there thank we go. you. Um, I think the first one too. I was like a day over it, and this time I think I was a, a day before it. So, yeah, that's been kind of exciting. Yeah, well, very. <laughs> it's a little bit more than exciting, I think. Um, this is, I keep using the word profound over and over, but I think in this community, profound seems to be very fitting. I I don't know, but uh, you definitely nailed this one, especially uh, when I got the text from Lon stating, uh, hey, there was a, another sighting in Chicago, and then he posted that online, and wow, yeah, that was crazy that, that uh, Jennifer called it, so... This is why Jennifer's part of the show. She's got something special. I kind of picked up on that a long time ago. I'm like, you know what? I think she can uh, pick up on a lot of things that that um, you just look at certain information or graphs and start to put pieces together. And 
she's got a talent for it, which is why she's known as Agent Noticer as well. Tonight's episode, I would love to hear from all of you, if you happen to be watching, um, Haunted Artifacts. I had put up a post um, over at the Acrylic Ranch page from uh, the Traveling Museum of the Paranormal and the Occult that is run by Greg Newkirk and Dana Mitchell. And the, uh, oh, oh, yes, Jennifer, please chime in. What, what, what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 thank you very much. That actually means more than you know. Oh, well, that's... <laughs> That's what you are. Sorry for the delay, folks. See, we have a few surprises coming up here that will kind of correct all of this so that it's a little bit easier for you guys to listen and follow along with the show and be a little bit more on the professional level. We're newbies, I, I believe. What was the word they uh, dubstep? Uh, what was the word that uh, MJ referred to us as, Jen? Fletchling. Yes, we are the baby bird. We are the baby bird of this whole thing. See, when you do a podcast, you have the ability to say, shut it, and then start over again, and then you can go through an editing process and make it all sound good, and you're plugged in, and there's no mistakes. You can cut out all the sneezes and coughs and, and have a drink break, and who would know, right? No, we choose to go live with the best that we've got here and oh well thank you skype appreciate your demon horns anyway i was talking about the traveling museum of the paranormal and the occult and i put up a post over on the acrylic ranch page um i do encourage you to go over there and give it a watch um what i brought this up i believe Jen, I think we talked about this on the show probably four, if not six months ago, uh, when they first tried doing this, and they said that they would release the video shortly, and now I've just seen the video, so it's been a number of months, and I'm sure that they're looking into it. So to give you a little bit of backstory, when I did the show about six months back, uh, talking about what they were doing, Greg and Dana over at the Traveling Museum of the Paranormal and the Occult, they were scanning, doing a 3D scan of a, and I will say the word idol, it's a small statuette, uh, they named it Billy, but I didn't want to say that they were doing a 3D scan of Billy Idol because I think you would all be really confused as to what we were talking about. What you need to do is go watch the video. Now, since tonight's subject matter is about haunted artifacts, while they were trying to scan Billy, um, there were a lot of really strange things that were happening that you can actually watch on the video. This is not like the two of them that they would mess it up just to ooh, sell you on something. No, there's clearly something blocking the image of when they were trying to to do a 3D scan of Billy, and the whole process, or what their whole idea is, is to do a 3D scan of this statuette, which they feel is possessed or has a haunting attached to it, and make a 3D printer miniature of Billy. Now, I can understand, you know, would that carry, would the 3D printed version also carry some of the, you know, haunted possession that Billy, the statuette, and again, I don't want to say Billy Idol and confuse everybody. But during that scanning process, the image kept getting blocked out in the face. They tried holding, you know, at a different angle above the head. But yet on the monitor, it's showing that they are scanning below the chin, even though they were holding it above the eyebrow line. And then every time they try to scan the face, there's clearly something blocking between the scanner and the idol. But with the video camera running, you see that there's nothing there to block the image. So it is a very fascinating video. I believe it's only like five minutes long, something, something like that. It's not going to take up your whole evening. However... It is a it's a head scratcher video. So I'm glad that they put that video out there. I know that uh, Coast to Coast um, ended up 
putting it up on their page, and I found it in a few other places, but I just went right to YouTube and uh, found it over there. If you're interested and you don't find it, which I'm sure you will find it on the Acrylic Ranch page, but you can also go over to uh, YouTube and just type in the Traveling Museum of the Paranormal and the Occult, and it'll be a video titled Billy, but you'll find it over at the Acrylic Ranch or Coast to Coast AM. They have it over there, too. It's beverage time because I like to talk a lot. Uh, Jennifer's not partaking in her voice clipping anymore. I think she's probably curled up on the floor taking a nap. So anyway, I wanted to hear from you about your haunted artifacts. If any of you have any haunted artifacts, artifacts now when i say haunted it doesn't mean that it's necessarily evil just that maybe something is attached to it and the reason why i bring that up is because i have my own little story here to share with you and i know that uh, jennifer wanted to also share a story um, about robert the doll um yeah i i know well jen feel free go ahead talk about robert the doll and then i would be more than happy to share my story about my haunted idols. Um, <laughs> or do, would you like me to share my story first while you're prepping it out? Because I could sit here in total silence while we're waiting for Jennifer to come on and send a voice clip. Um, yeah, I know, Eric, this is your favorite story. I think Eric may be the only one that I've shared this story with. So here's how it goes. Some years back... Um, the ex and myself, uh, she had a resale shop. It was a consignment shop. And towards the end of days with that shop and our personal lives going in its own separate direction, um, I had stopped over to visit the kids over at the house. And there were three birds sitting on the table. Now, these are wooden birds. And they're, they're actually kind of really awesome. I know it might be a little bit blurred out for you, but there's three of them. And the third one is actually outside by the acrylic ranch pond, but I do take care of it. Um, and they were sitting on the table, and I made a comment. I'm like, wow, I really like those birds, which was very true. And uh, I was told, yeah, no, they're mine. I'm like, oh, okay, I was just paying compliment to the fact that I really like those birds. Well, then my birthday rolled around, and there was a little box from her, and she gave me the birds. Um, I had put them up on the shelf uh, the night I got them. I displayed all three of them together and put them on a shelf together. Um, at some point that night, while laying in bed, um, mind you, I'm in the house by myself, I feel a left butt cheek being rubbed by hand. And it woke me up, and I'm feeling my butt cheek being rubbed by hand. And I freaked. I mean, I flipped over expecting somebody's there, and there's nobody there. And it just it really creeped me out because I, I woke up, but I didn't jump right away because I felt the hand rubbing and... Come on, seriously, you know when there's a hand rubbing your butt cheek. I uh, flipped over. <sighs> Nothing there. Not a shadow. Not an not evil presence. I didn't feel anything negative. It was... That's what happened. Well, I had made a comment later on um, to the ex about where did those birds come from? And, well, it came from an estate of a man that passed away. And, uh, yeah, this gentleman was of the gay persuasion. Doesn't matter to me, but then I put two and two together, and I definitely, looking at the birds, felt a connection between him and these three birds, uh, whatever it may have been, maybe this was his way of saying, I appreciate you for liking the same thing I like, and let's get to know each other by me saying hi. I, I have no idea. Now, since then, I have had no further strange encounters that way of being touched in such a 
peculiar way, uh, especially being home by myself. But I did attribute it to the three birds. The other bird happens to be a house sparrow. This is a cardinal, and the other one is a blue jay. And they're carved out of wood. Uh, they're hand carved out of wood and hand painted. So I wish it weren't so blurry so you can get a better look at what. But, yeah, no, they were cool. I really liked them. But it was that what caused it? I have no idea, unless the hat man, I don't know, maybe he's switched teams. I, I'm not really sure. Um, anyway, <laughs> okay, well, send it on over, Jen, and, and we'll listen to your Robert the Doll story. Uh, that's my personal artifact. I know that there's a couple other things that I have questioned. I have a picture of my father that I collected. Hi, Kathy. And Yes, we certainly have a... Uh, <laughs> We certainly have a little message that we did for you earlier. Um, but there is a picture of my father. It's a very small picture. And I collected it after uh, my parents' estate went up as a clearinghouse. Uh, they were clearing out the estate after uh, my mom had passed away. And so I grabbed this picture of my father and I put it up on top next to my entertainment center next to my TV. And I had shut down all the lights one night, and I'm going to bed, you know, it's end of night, and everything was off. The TV was off, DVD players off, everything was turned off. But as I'm heading towards the bedroom, I hear a very distorted, buzzing voice that sounded very much like my father. I had no idea, and they turned around, and I was very focused on listening. Where is this voice coming from? And it was coming from the picture that was sitting on top of the DVD player. Now the DVD player has no speaker in it. It's just a DVD player and the TV is off. But I'm hearing a message being sent to me in a very electronic sounding voice in my dad's tone. And I'm looking at the picture and I, I, I couldn't quite make out what the words were. And if anybody knows me, I wear headphones because I'm got bad hearing to begin with people usually talk to me you will say the same thing three times to me going god you're a moron no i'm sorry i just have had hearing problems for many years i'm not looking for a sympathy call but so i had my face right there in front of his picture and i'm asking him like please repeat yourself please repeat yourself because i didn't understand what you had to tell me and it's important for me and i never heard it again I would say his message was probably replaying it back in my head and thinking it was about 15 seconds of whatever message it was that he was trying to convey to me. And I say him, I'm pretty convinced it was my dad, especially coming from that picture. So, you know, it gave me comfort, didn't freak me out at all. I don't think that there would be anything bad attached to, you know, a picture of my dad. But it, well, like I said, it was comforting. Um, Jennifer, <coughs> excuse me, folks, didn't mean to cough in your face. We're going to listen to uh, Jennifer's Robert the Doll story. Hopefully it doesn't dubstep on us too much, but uh, let's see. What what was it, Jennifer? Um, so, basically, I found out about Robert the Doll, I don't know, it was like months ago, and I believe that it was from Week and Weird. And I, I found it so interesting because as I was reading through the story, there was these images that would kind of just start popping into my head. And I really didn't feel Robert himself was really evil or anything like that. Um, I basically was getting this sense of sadness. And... I also had kind of a picture of uh, of a woman in, in my, you know, in my mind. And so I decided to go from the article over on Weekend Weird and kind of look it up elsewhere online. And that's where I found out that there was a woman who was a slave who ended up um, having the um, home, homeowner's uh, child, and the wife, I believe, of the homeowner. He was she was also pregnant, 
And what ended up happening is, is the, the slave woman, she ended up getting locked in a like shed and her baby only lived for a couple days. And then after her baby passed away, um, she was actually forced to care for the homeowner and his wife's child, which, you know, and so, um, after that, um, after a while, they, I can't remember why they were getting rid of her. Maybe it was because she practiced a certain type of spiritual practice. I would have to go back and re reread the story. I was going to do that today and I totally spaced it. But, um, she gave the doll to the child that she cared for. And it, the story that I read just completely mirrored exactly what I was seeing in my mind. Mm -hmm. And so I really mm -hmm. feel like Robert is just full of sadness and can, can connection between the woman and the child. And that she kind of took that child on as her own. So when she was sent away back to Haiti or wherever it was, um, you know, it was just, it was just really super uh, devastating. And she wanted to have the ball, the, the, <laughs> the doll protect him. And I think that that's kind of why things began to happen the way that they did. Well, that sounds like it would make a lot of sense. Um, I think I've heard that story before from you. I think we talked about that, geez, months back. Um, but yeah, it's kind of fascinating. Um, I believe Shannon LeGroat put up something that she was going to do an ITF episode. Am I mistaken on that? I thought she was going to do an ITF episode on it. If not, I'm sure maybe it's still in a production value or somewhere on the editing room or on the floor. I, I don't know, but I thought that Shannon was going to do something on that. Um, I, Kathy messaged me earlier today that she had like 500 dolls and stuffed animals and they all had black eyes and she just kind of got creeped out. And especially with a doll that has, you know, all the black eyes. Um, yeah, it seems like they just will kind of follow you around as you walk around the room. I kind of chuckled at that text. I'm like, yeah, 500 would be quite a bit to deal with. Um, time to put you all in a bag and make you all go away, especially if one of them just kind of moves ever so slightly. I was like, yeah, no. Um, you know, going back just to personal artifacts, uh, in, in the resale consignment shop, that I made reference to earlier, uh, there were a number of times, and and I'm I, I really was unaware and didn't really even think about it at the time, but when you have a consignment shop or a resale shop, you're talking about things that come from all over the region, uh, and, and the stories that those artifacts are coming from into one area to be resold to somebody else. I think there's a lot of energy and attachment to certain things. And there were a small handful of times that, um, you know, the resale store would get closed up. We'd, we'd get in the car. We'd go home. Now, we only lived three blocks away from the store. It was rather convenient. And then, uh, you know, there'd be a circumstance where I would have to go pick up one of my kids from a friend's house. And I'd drive past the store and I'd see that the open sign was left on and... I'd go in to have to turn the open sign off, and it seemed like every time I walked in there, I was I felt just this overwhelming sensation of being watched. As soon as I walked in there, I just felt like I was being watched, and then it seemed like it never failed. Something, I, you'd no sooner walk in the door, and something up in the showroom would fall over. I'm not even anywhere close to where... <laughs> that activity happened and you know something would fall and you get this kind of this bird I, I don't know how to explain it other than like in Bigfoot testimony you, know, you get the feeling of being watched until you have that feeling I don't know of any other way to describe it but 
yeah, it was really weird. Yeah, do I feel like I'm being watched now? Yeah, I, you should see the goose pimples on my arms right now. Uh, but yeah, it was a very strange experience, and it happened more often than not. And the last time I remember, the last event that happened there uh, to me personally, and I don't remember... I believe it was either something with the open sign or a kids needed something from the store to do a school project with. Either way, it's 10 o'clock at night, it's winter, it's dark, and I went in there, and as soon as you open the back door to walk in this long, narrow hallway to take you into the shop area, where every... one thing fell over, a spoon that was hanging, and it was like a big metal ladle. It came off a hook. If you ever remember that scene from the original Jurassic Park when the kids are scooting around in the kitchen trying to hide from the velociraptors and then the spoon falls, is that's exactly what happened. The spoon fell off a hook, and then the spatula. And then it was either like a basting brush. All three came off the hook and fell on the floor. Craziest thing. I was like, nope, nope, turn around. Felt like I'm being watched, locked the door, left. So, yeah, I believe in an environment like that uh, with resale shops. I'm sure there's probably a lot of merchandise in there. Furniture, vases, you name it, lamps, whatever, that just have, you know. You figure everything everybody buys, they buy it out of love because they really want to have that piece. Or it was passed along to them and it and it meant something to them and then maybe they passed on so these items would end up in a resale shop or a consignment shop type of an environment I cannot I cannot not say that there's probably a lot of attachments to a lot of things and, and I just never gave that a consideration during the time of working in that industry altogether so you know when this birds thing happened and now of course looking back i certainly wasn't freaked out by it at all but either way uh let's go back to you know haunted possessions and idols i don't see anybody putting anything in that they have any artifacts that they feel that may have something attached to it um you know, who knows, a pair of shoes that walk by themselves would be kind of helpful. You know, Jennifer, you know, kind of immediately thought, well, we're going to be talking about artifacts that have evil possessions to them. <laughs> Not necessarily, no. Uh, uh, there are a few of them out there that are questionable that, um, like I said, Greg and Dana uh, talked about over at the Museum of Paranormal and the occult. Now, I think they're a little bit more geared to being able to deal with something like that, but uh, oh, Jennifer, you once had a music box that would play on its own. No. No, no. No, 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 no. See, there's, is there, am I the only one I get a show of hands from people that think sometimes music boxes are really creepy. Yeah, they can play a really cutesy little tune, but you hear a music box go off at 3 a.m. or something. I don't know. Something's up here. That is a telltale sign of something about to go wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. I do have I do have to say I have a couple music boxes. They're not the typical boxes. One's a musical globe, but it's all well, in the same. <laughs> yeah, in the night. Too, yeah, it was horrible. I could only imagine how horrible it was. Oh, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, uh, like I said, I've got one. It's a musical globe, but it's the same principle. It's a music box, little, little cylinder with a notch metal, and the little tangs play the music. I have never heard that thing start playing. Now I know damn well I'm going to go to bed tonight, and it's going to start playing around the world in 80 days, at <laughs> three in the morning. I'll be like, so be. Why did I bring that up? I think I have maybe two others here, but I haven't played them in such a long time. One of them is my grandmother's, but I haven't played them in forever. So, But, yeah, they start playing by themselves. Something's up. 
something is definitely up, especially if they're completely wound out and they're done playing. Hot, wait, what? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I really like that. That's that's amazing, the old music box thing. Um, yeah, getting back to my Greg and Dana's thing, I think they're kind of geared towards trying to figure out a lot of this stuff and you know maybe they're a little bit more manly than i am about it i have no idea i'm not really sure but um good for them because i don't know that i'd be able to handle a lot of it now if you do have an artifact anybody that's watching this at any point and you do have an artifact that is the person to contact is greg newkirk and dana mitchell over at the traveling museum of the paranormal and the occult you can find them on a google search um you can contact them they'd be willing to look at the item or hold on to the item and try to figure out what's going on with the item they do accept donations if you don't know what to do with your haunted item because some people have donated some the mirror i know shannon talked to uh Greg and Dana on Into the Fray Radio, and they talked about the mirror. No, no, and they still have possession of that mirror where you look into it and it all things evil you see staring back at you. And, and no, I don't need to see that voluntarily. They want to have possession of it, that's fine. I believe they say they keep a uh, cloth over the mirror so that temptation doesn't. Ah, good for them. It better in their hands than my hands because I would have had that thing flung out in Lake Michigan. Let the Mothman deal with it. I, I'm not sure. Crazy. Kind of, uh, really crazy stuff. I don't know. Anyway, so if you have, you know, and of course this will post and record and it's going to be up for a while. Um, oh wait, okay, so Alan's going to chime in. I think I got bit by the Mothman about 400 times when I was. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah, it's Mosquito Man. Different superhero altogether, Alan. But but thanks for rubbing it in, the fact that you were there. <laughs> but thanks for joining us anyway. <laughs> uh, Alan, I don't know if you've kept up with all the Mothman sightings. And, and not too terribly far from your mom's house, either. Um, all along you know, the lakefront, uh, generally from just north of Navy Pier... And south, as far south as into Calumet, there's a ton of people that have seen this flying humanoid with, like, bat wings. Um, I, we're all sitting here shrugging our shoulders. The last time there's been this big of a flap with the Mothman was in Point Pleasant back in the late 60s, uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Uh, Seth Breedlove made a wonderful documentary about the Mothman of Point Pleasant, and that's actually the name of it. A uh, great documentary. Best one I have seen about the Mothman to this moment, and I'm not sure that I would even see a better documentary about it. Um, but here the whole flap is happening up in Chicago now, and, and maybe at some point there'll be another documentary done about what this thing is, you know, because a lot of witnesses say that it ascends up into the sky until it's out of sight. Um, the squirrel suit has been pretty much ruled out by uh, Manuel Navarrete and myself and Lon Strickler. Um, we've all pretty much ruled out it is not a squirrel suit. And there's even, on a science aspect, that chimed in, no, it's not a squirrel suit. There's way too much updrafts in the city of Chicago. and be It's a suicide mission, pretty much. Um, but those vandals and thieves around my house, yeah, well, <laughs> it's not a Mothman, huh? Well, maybe that's what Mothman is. Maybe he's a superhero and he's taking out these vandals and thieves. Uh, they don't belong anywhere. Uh, but it's a mystery still left to be unraveled. I only keep bringing up the whole Mothman thing for the fact, be, just because I'm facing the direction that all these sightings are being I'm, I'm literally looking out my window and if i could see you know 28 miles in a straight line i'd be right there um, where all these sightings are happening fortunately i live off of north avenue if you've scoped it out on the map or seen lon strickler's uh, sighting map you'll see route 64 
uh, that's a direct straight line, straight as an arrow between where these sightings are and St. Charles, which, again, I'm giving away the ranch location, but you're more than welcome to come out and visit any time. Um, so my point is nobody knows. There's another flap happening. The last one was this past Saturday. What we're, we'll just... No, thanks, Bobby. Bobby added something to the acrylic ranch, so be looking forward to seeing that. Uh, I'm really sorry that Jennifer wasn't more audible with us tonight. Uh, once I get in my ranch wagon, I'm going to head over to the Skype headquarters and just beat the living crap out of somebody over there. It's like, why is your Skype work so good during the day? And then you need it. And maybe it's quite possibly that more people are on the Skype in the evening hours. I don't know, but... You know, a couple of failures we've tried like i said we tried to hang out we've tried the facebook messenger um the be live thing it, it's still going to be the same type of issues so yeah i know dawn used to live in st charles i don't know where dawn is tonight uh she's going to use the excuse that she's working but uh maybe it's a moth woman it's very possible alan and it could be her maybe that's why we haven't heard from her maybe this is all dawn's fault She's the moth woman. Although, you know, we did go down there together looking for Mothman, and we didn't see anything. So, hmm, maybe you're onto something. You you could be very much onto something there. Anyway, so I was apologizing for the fact that, you know, Jennifer and I weren't a little bit more interactive with you. Uh, we do have a, <laughs> she's not worried. She works in a country club, Alan. She's the entertainer over at a country club, and I'm sure you know that. Um, it, you know, the whole idea for uh, Jennifer and myself is to really be bringing you guys a wonderful product, a wonderful audio quality. You don't have to watch me. You can walk around the house, clean your house, or do whatever it is you do. You can listen to Acrylic Ranch at any time. I'd like to throw you out some pertinent information. Um, Jennifer and myself have a mission statement that anything that we talk about on the show or most things that we share on the show, we are not saying this is absolute fact. Um, we're not here to glorify stories. We are not here to make up stories, nor do we really promote those that do. Um, I did pull down a video, and no fault to Bobby, because I think Bobby was actually really excited to share some Mothman a video with us at the Acrylic Ranch. I only removed it because I rewatched the video again, and it took things so far out of context. And if I see things are not in context or are kind of making the topic matter a little bit more spectacular than what actually happened, I try to crumple it up and throw it away. Uh, Jennifer and myself only want to give you guys the absolute best and and straightforward, uh, no BS. And any type of story that we share with you, whether it was the secret societies, whether it is about the Mothman, whether it is about ghosts, uh, things that may be happening here, there, and everywhere, personal stories that Jennifer shares, personal stories that I share, personal stories that you share that you give us permission to share with the rest of the ranch. Um, you know, it's cut and dry. We we won't embellish. Uh, I don't like embellishment. I, I just have a thing against it. I just want to know what the witness encounter is, what the facts are, and leave it be. Everybody can make up their mind on their own as to what it is that they may be experiencing, or you take away the, from the story whatever you want to take away from it. So, uh, let's see. Uh, we are wanting to bring you as much truth as possible to the best of our ability. You, des you deserve to <laughs> know true things. Yes, very well said, Jennifer. Thank you very kindly. That is Jennifer's and mine's mission statement. And it is very important to us. And each week, Jennifer and myself, you really have no idea the amount of time that the two of us put into what goes on at the Acrylic Ranch to try to fine-tune, put things together, 
uh, try to modify the equipment here. I'm buying new equipment and putting things together. She has wonderful ideas. I've got wonderful ideas, and I'm telling you, things are about to get really exciting in the near future because then the new systems will be up and running. Uh, we have a few offers to ask of you guys in the future, and I think you're going to see this huge, amazing return um, because uh, we're the first ones that I know of to really kind of take it down this avenue in a live aspect in doing a show like this. But what we have planned in the future, it's super exciting, and it's a lot of fun, and it is so interactive for all of you it's a very interactive very hands-on um and jennifer and myself want you all the viewers to be as much part of the show as we are part of the show because this is just one big community um jennifer did some analytics on the acrylic ranch thank you world I cannot express to you how much thank you, world. We have a wonderful audience in South America. We have a wonderful audience in Australia, in Ireland, in Canada, California. We've got a great audience. Texas, uh, Mexico, New York, Yonkers. As Jennifer and myself enjoyed just to say, Yonkers. Uh, Illinois in the Midwest. So thank you to everybody that's watching. Uh, our, the Acrylic Ranch is getting translated for those that don't speak English quite as fluently as me, and I don't even speak English all that well. Um, and Florida, yes, thank you, Alan. I greatly appreciate it. Yes, the show is reaching globally, and with the uh, uh, analytics that... Uh, wait, where? Uh, <laughs> I see. That's why I need you on the show so that you can actually pronounce this stuff. Burma, yes, we we have viewers in Burma. I believe we had viewers out of the Philippines too. So, I want to thank the world uh, very much for participating. We want everybody to participate and have a tangible piece of the acrylic ranch that you can call your very own and be a contributing factor. Of course. I don't want to run on too long, too long, and too long, but none of this would have ever come to fruition. And as you see the acrylic ranch progress on from here on in through the future, uh, I personally owe, and I know that Jennifer owes Miss Shannon Legro the hugest debt of gratitude. Um, if it wasn't for her, Jennifer and myself would not have met to put the acrylic ranch together. I really encourage you guys to get over to IntoTheFrayRadio.com. Uh, Shannon's airing new episodes every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And it's easy It's easy to find the show. You don't have to wait till 7 p.m. to listen to her show. You just wait till 7 p.m. to listen to the newest, the latest, uh, the greatest show every Thursday at 7 p.m. But if you go to IntoTheFrayRadio.com, you can listen to any episode that you want there. If you want it on your personal device, so let's say you have an Apple device or an iPhone, you can just down or just search on iTunes into the Fray Radio. All the episodes will be there. You can listen to whatever episode you want. It's the same thing with Android. Just go to the Play Store, Google Play Store. You can download Stitcher. And that's the podcatcher, and then you do the same thing. Once it's downloaded, just search into the fray radio.com. And again, you can listen to any episode that you wish. On top of which, if you go over to into the fray radio.com, there is that option also, along with the episodes of becoming an insider. Uh, Shannon had taken a trip and gave the insiders a behind the scenes look to such a creepy place creepy tales that went on at fox hollow farm uh it's worth just that in itself just to become an insider um it's easy to sign up to become an insider and uh, with some of the videos that you put up uh left the hairs on the back of my neck standing up of some of the witness testimonies of things that happened over at Fox Hollow Farm in Indianapolis. Um, and you can go over there and be happy to, you know, or you'll at least 
be able to get all the information about Fox Hall of Farm, you can Google search that too and get the backstory behind what Herb did on that property. Kind of crazy, but yeah. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Shannon Legrow. You're a huge part of all of this that made this happen, and we certainly are having. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, Jennifer, I meant not Vanessa. I have no idea what you guys are talking about right now, but that's okay. I really, it's quite all right. Alan, thank you so much for stopping by. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, make sure that you share with your lovely wife, Karen, and and your kids, uh, acrylic ranch ideas and so on, and you can be part of all of this too. If you ever see anything creepy, unusual, strange, bizarre, scientific, uh, we even do the scientific over here, too. Uh, be greatly appreciated. Um, and I guess I want to wrap things up, too. If you have any kind of artifacts, just leave them in the comments below. You can always leave comments on these videos because these videos will stay up, and uh, you can continue making comments on it. So whenever you have time to wash uh let's see many blessings shannon legro our gratitude to you yes absolutely thank you shannon uh greatly 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 like i said if it weren't for shannon uh the communication between jennifer and myself would have never happened um and again with the amount of work that goes into all of this stuff this isn't just something where we turn the camera on and we do a show and shut it off and we just go back to there's a lot of prep that we put together and you know coordinating and uh we'll have some super special guests coming up here in the future so yeah you see something strange in the mirror uh every day huh alan i'm sure you do I, I'll just leave my comments at that, okay? I'll just leave my comments, right? Just don't wear such a goofy hat and, and those sunglasses, and you'll be like, oh, that's what I look like. I get it. No, he's my cousin, and I love him. So thank you, Alan. I greatly appreciate you stopping by. Okay, so make sure you get over to Into the Fray Radio, our favorite podcast. They look, there's so many, there's such a plethora of podcasts out there. It's like trying to juggle, saying, well, which one's my favorite? I can't. I can't. The one I cherish the most is Into the Fray Radio. Um, but, man, I'm telling you, the plethora of podcasts that just deal in this community, go over to The Acrylic Ranch. You can find it on the Facebook page. You can go to theacrylicranch.weebly.com, and you'll be able to find the list of the podcasts that just will wrap you so tightly in this entire community. Anything from Arcane Radio to Micah Hanks and the Graylian Report, uh, uh, Somewhere in the Skies with Ryan Sprague. I know I'm missing, uh, I, I don't mean that deliberately. My brain is racing really fast here, but we greatly appreciate all of you guys and support you, and thank you all for supporting the Acrylic Ranch and its silliness and its fletchling days, as MJ would say. Fletchling. Someday I'll get that word right. <laughs> we'll figure it out. All right, guys. Thank you. I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, next, okay, we're going to keep working on the system here so that Jennifer can say hi once I call her a silly name after I introduce her. So until next Tuesday... If you have anything interesting to add, please let us know over at uh, the acrylic ranch dot gmail. I believe that's what it is. I know Jennifer put up our our email address. You can contact us there. You can contact us at the acrylic ranch Facebook page or just about anywhere else. That's that's fine. But until next week, no closing music. We will talk real soon.